Welcome to the Gentleman's Talk, where the podcast talks about a man's battle with mental health, his personal experiences, and his journey to be a better soul. Hosted by James Dean Littlejohn. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Gentleman's Talk. Here I am on Sunday, Reflection Hour. (laughs) I'm excited to be back. Um, As you well know, I've dropped off a a little bit just to give a little bit more quality over quantity, you know. So um, I'd rather deliver stuff as it happens and keep keep you, as well as going over things that I'm learning and as well as developments all the time, it's nice to talk about things and keep myself consistent. And one of the things I've been doing with that is rightly so, just making sure that I prioritise things, making sure that I don't overwhelm myself, which is certainly what happens when I get excited about certain things is I, I almost go all in, absolutely, I'm all in gym, you know, one of those guys. So I did that at the start of the podcast, I think, and that's where I lost a little bit of consistency, and then I did it about the middle time, so I've, I've you know, this is a, a rocky road, and every day you have to continuously battle your mental health um otherwise you'll just keep losing the fight um and that's sort of an interesting little sort of feed line if you like into my sort of last week really um it's had its ups it's had its downs like like anything you know when you're dealing with mental health um you know you have to take the rough with the smooth i've i've had a relatively good week um you know good site visits uh you know lots of sort of camaraderie banter if you like you know with my fellow colleagues and you know sort of fed into an amazing weekend really and here I am on the tail end of a a good weekend however um, it's not all you know bright sparks there's a little bit of doom and gloom some little things that have affected me but in a not in a negative way against anyone else but just in a negative way in in myself and it's important that I talk about those things as well because, you know, you might be able to relate. There might be something you're thinking about, something that happens to you that might trigger, um, you know, a positive response in the sense of the advice I give. So, like I said, fed into an amazing weekend, absolutely incredible weekend, actually. So the the sad side to it was there's a, there's a good and a, and, a, and a bad side to this was I was meant to go out Friday with my, my dad <clears throat> originally for uh, Father's Day sort of drinks if you like and we had a chat a couple of weeks ago and, we, and then we didn't really sort of talk again since we sort of left it two weeks and um, that sort of leads me on to communication really that how important communication is so I assumed that he didn't want to go so and by him not communicating with me saying oh we still up for Saturday or you know he, his his idea was you know, he's absolutely, um, you know, wants to get involved and all this sort of stuff. So he didn't, he said the day was set, which was Friday. I was staying over at the old parents' house, um, you know, sort of reminiscing when I left there when I was 16. Um, but it's always nice to stay. I always feel pampered when I go over there because, um, you know, mum and dad treat me, uh, you know, like I've been away for a long time. So they treat me like royalty, which is always nice. I always get treated and spoiled. So anyway, as I digress, um, <clears throat> Yeah, sort of fed into that sort of subsided. And and then all of a sudden, I I received this phone call from my brother on the Tuesday night. And it was like, um, what are you doing Friday? And I was like, oh, actually, I think, and this is the bad bit. Um, I was like, oh, my mate, I said, oh, my my mate. I said, my my mate Kieran's coming over. Adrian knows Kieran. So I said to him, yeah, he's coming over. We're going to run through some interview stuff. And I'm going to, because he's going for an interview, so I said I'd help help him support. He's coming into the same organisation as me. So I said I'd help him out. I was like, I'll try and, you know, give you a little bit of interview practice and stuff like that and, you know, sort of go through, the you know, the TOs, all the boring stuff. And I said that will lead into knocking it on the head and then we'll go into the evening and we'll have some drinks and, and just a good catch-up. So... That was kind of where it led. So my, I was, my brother went, so we're not going out with Dad then on Friday? And I went, well, I don't know. I said, we, you know, we haven't spoke. And I didn't speak to him and he didn't speak to me. And Aidy was like, well, Dad thinks you are. So, of course, I put myself into a bit of a double pickle there, really, because I'd arranged to go out with my mate um, to help him as well, you know, that it would just led into a night out. Although it was casual um, and it was a you know casual night, it still means a lot to me when we get together and we have a good fucking, you know, good chat. And then... <clears throat> you know, ultimately, I said to, you know, dad, that I was going to go to him. And I said first, but we just didn't communicate. So lack of communication. That's the thing with men is 
how many times can you relate to the fact that men just don't communicate with each other? Hence the reason why I bloody do this fucking podcast because I'm trying to promote men being open and honest about themselves and try to talk and actually, you know, get your feelings over, you know, and and one of those things that that just absolutely, um, you know, highlights life there of how important it is to communicate. So anyway, so I had a bit of a dilemma. So I was like, right, on one hand, I've got to let down Kieran and, and go out with my dad because, you know, I, I felt that I, for me personally, I looked at it in a double-edged sword, really. This is how crazy my brain was thinking, was like, it's my dad, you know, I don't get a lot of time to spend with him. So I really do value the, the time and, and effort I can go to him because, you know, he is getting older and older. He's almost 70. So those times are really precious to me because they make massive memories and we don't know what's around the corner. And then, <clears throat> you know, on the other hand, um, you know, Kieran, I, I was sort of looking at him, well, Kieran, we have we can have a random night whenever. And we've got years ahead of us. So I had like a catch 22, but at the same time, I didn't want to let Kieran down. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. You can imagine my head. That is just a little snippet of how my brain was thinking. And then, anyway, rightly so. I just said to Kieran, "I'm really, I'm really, am sorry, mate. I've sort of got, I've got to let you down, and I, and I hate that." Um, but ultimately, I looked at it as you know, I'm going to get a crack out of my um, dad as much as I would Kieran. But I get time's a lot more precious, and the fact that my brother was coming along, which was an extra double bond for, you know, for me really because. <clears throat> you know, I absolutely adore spending time with my brother. So, and we really, really fucking bonded over the last sort of six months since I started my journey and st- I stopped becoming a bit of an arsehole. Um, only a bit, though. Um, he seems to be able to be a lot more open with me, which is absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> but it just, again, it highlights how my mental health has put those barriers up for years. Like, And I do put those barriers up. And you don't mean to, and it's not, sometimes with mental health, it's not even about the barriers. It's actually about the way that you talk to people or the way that you are. And I was actually quite an aggressive person. So, and my brother really isn't an aggressive person at all. He's completely the opposite. I mean, we look like twin brothers, but completely the opposite. However, we've got similar, well, like I say, we're twins on the, uh, in almost everything, apart from the fact that he's a lot more chilled out than I am. So I can see how those barriers that you put up with mental health, especially PTSD, you know, you're kind of like crazy all the time. You're overthinking everything all the time. And it can be just as exhausting for other people as well as yourself. And that's sometimes forgotten. Sometimes the person that receives it and, you know, they're, they're, they can be selfish and narrow minded and almost go, well, God, you're fucking exhausting me, mate. You, you know, and, and I imagine that my, my wife's gone through that. I imagine that she's been exhausted going, fuck, you know, I can't put up with him anymore. He's fucking off his head. Ten years of it. So and then there's the other factor where I think that the other person's being selfish for not understanding me. So, you know, it's kind of like a double edged sword, really, isn't it? It's kind of. There's no real positives about it. But at the same time, if you're an aggressive person like me, you naturally... And I don't mean aggressive like, fine, I'm going around kicking people. But I've got, you know, I, I've, I've got a sort of... I love the fact that getting confrontational. It's kind of like I told you before in my previous podcast. For me, it raises the adrenaline bar and gives me something that my mental health's taken away, which is the serotonin factor and the endorphins. That's all been removed by this mental health, by PTSD. And that's what people forget is however you find your fix to get the adrenaline, it, it becomes almost like an addiction. It's almost like its own drug, and it is a drug, um, you know, and that's what people forget is if you were, say, for instance, had mental health conditions and you're, you know, you liked, I don't know, you, that's why a lot of people when they have mental health conditions take drugs because they gives them the high that is completely missing. And if you can imagine, and I don't think many people can, and this is one thing that's kind of the, the most prevalent part about mental health is nobody can physically see what has been taken away from you or the person that is, is in that mental health bubble. Nobody can understand why, unless you've physically been through depression or you've physically, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about having a sad day. I mean, once you've physically been through depression for a long period of time where your body has shut down and said, fuck you, I'm not interested anymore, mate, and you just, everything's t- stiff, tense, migraines constantly. Once you've been to that point, then 
you can hand on heart say you probably know what's been what it's like to have serotonin and adrenaline taken away from you it's 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 debilitating to have that removed and chase it and once you have it you can have it for a split second i can go on a motorbike and have the best time in the fucking in the world and i can go on again the next time and it won't be the same and that's another constant battle for me is constantly trying to find a sport that i find fun that and stick to it long enough that I keep it routine. And I've done that before with wakeboarding. I did it for a year and a half, bought the membership, never went again. And it's kind of, you know, I've bought fast cars, fast motorbikes, and, and, you know, here I am trying to sell my motorbike because I don't get the thrill out of it anymore. I don't enjoy it. It's, and when you're constantly battling that all the time, it's, it's absolutely crippling. And some people don't see that. They see maybe the tiredness or the mood swings. But they don't see the inner self, the bit that's been ripped away that you can't, you can't naturally replicate without a lot of hard work. And yes, you can take antidepressants, and antidepressants will give you a lift of some description. And they, it, it, I, I always call call an antidepressant. It's just a stabilizer. It's just something to get you through the day until you get you work on yourself long enough to take yourself off of it and that's why some people are on them for a long time because even coming off of them can be just as scary because you're then trying to let your body kick in something that a tablet's been giving you and that takes whiles that takes a while so you've got to try and almost live on the easiest way to explain it so you have to live in the adrenaline world so chase the adrenaline to try and force your body to make the chemicals even more so you have to be consistently doing stupid shit for me consistently doing things that reward you all the time to try and keep the serotonin levels high enough so that I can relax and take myself off the tablets and in four years that's not happened and I did try like I said last year I tried to come off the tablets but it fucking ruined me absolutely fucking ruined me so as I massively digress there but it's really important that you manage those things and you manage how you deal with it and you've got to learn these things and, and like I said before and I've said this previously in a podcast when you make inroads to, to, to bettering yourself and increasing your mental health and well-being physically making the effort to do it so that might be through you know cold water therapy cold showers which I love doing and I don't talk about it as much at the moment but because it's a routine for me I enjoy doing it so you know, for me, I didn't want to bleat on about the same thing. You have to do something. And this is where we, we, we pull into the why in a minute. So if you're doing your, you know, your yoga, your Pilates, your um, mindfulness, your reflection time, you know, whatever, you know, body mapping, whatever, you, you have to do these things to naturally look after yourself. So you have to constantly, like I constantly, every single day now, have reflection time. I have mindfulness. What do I do? I go out with my dog in the evening well three or four times a day and that breaks me away from the norm gives me time with my dog and gives me a time with nature and what a better time at the moment and this time of year when at half nine it's absolutely glorious the sun's just gone down the war the cool air's coming up it's a beautiful thing but what you have to do and this is something that I've, i've mentioned before on a podcast you have to do your new learned um you have to do your new learned ability or something you're learning routinely enough for three months. Well, the actual stat is an average of 66 days it takes for somebody to develop a new behavior, a learned new behavior, and make it so that you can do it consistently enough without thinking about it. You have to do it for 66 days on average. So they say I think it's eight. 18 to 264 is the spectrum, average 66 days. So how many times, and this is something I touched on today when I was talking about mental health on my little webinar thing, Um, because I I start talking about mental health with other people now because I quite enjoy the aspect of it. But one thing, like I said, I learned is you have to do that behavior for 66 days. Otherwise, it doesn't become routine. It doesn't become the norm. It doesn't become something you you know you you will constantly do without thinking about it and one of the things I've I've done in in the last three four months is religiously every single day no matter what whether it's you know one or three walks I always go for at least one walk and I always make sure that it's the final one of the day so that I get that mindfulness 
at, uh, from nine till ten, I get that mindfulness to just analyse my day and I make sure that if I don't get out in the morning or I don't get out at dinner, then does it matter? No, as long as I get out for that final reflection walk, that mindfulness. And it's so important. And since I've been doing that, it's now... Uh, my body clock almost looks at the clock at nine o'clock. It almost goes to it and goes, it must be around nine o'clock, I'm going out. So it's become routine. It's no different to setting your alarm at half past six every morning and waking up every morning at half past six. Eventually, you will start waking up just before that alarm clock because your body will naturally do that. So it's no different to your new learned behavior, doing it at a certain time religiously every day for 66 days on average. You will see that develop into just something you do routinely without even thinking about it. It's a new learned behavior. And a lot of people forget that. And one thing, like I said, I was chatting around this morning, and one thing I asked them was, how many times have you tried to learn to do something? Or you've tried mindfulness, or you've tried yoga, and you go, well, I've tried it three times in the last two weeks, and, you know, it just hasn't fucking worked for me. What's all this? It's not working. It's not working. Well, you've got to ask yourself if you've given yourself enough time, and I would probably say, judging on that as an average stat, no, you haven't. So no wonder it's not going to work because you're not doing it consistently and routinely enough for your body to know that at a certain time you will release serotonin or your body gets used to it. You go, right, I'm going to go out for a walk. So you start smelling the air, you start going for the walks and enjoying nature. And it's so important to do that. So that was something I was speaking about. And just it, it was interesting how sometimes you forget that. Sometimes you forget that you have to consistently do something. Otherwise, it's not worth it. And you've just wasted your time. And that's where I think a lot of people will fail in their mental health journeys because they don't give things enough time. They don't actively try things for long enough. They don't set themselves up in the right area. So like I spoke to you at the start of my first ever podcasts where I was talking about setting up the right area for you, setting up the right room the right lighting, making yourself feel comfortable, meditation, the right music. These are all important factors of doing it right. There's no point just sitting in a room, crossing your legs and going om and thinking that you're going to be a delightful mental health wizard at the end of a couple of sessions. No, you don't. You need to make yourself relaxed. You need to take yourself out of the distractions, not bring your mobile phone. Or if you bring your mobile phone, you can use it as a music player. Use it as a music player, but put it out of reach lie back, set the right lighting, set the right temperature and just enjoy that reflection time whether that be the way you do it that way or you go out for a walk. These are all important things that we forget and that's ultimately what leads to our demise half the time is you've not looked after yourself long enough and you've decided to focus on things like work and not the right things and then you become consumed by work and then you get stressed by it because you're offloading also, you're, you, everyone's offloading more work onto you because you're there more and you're asking for more work. It's a vicious cycle, people. It's an absolutely vicious cycle. It's dangerous. It causes stress. And they're already saying that it's going to be one of the biggest killers in men. And, and, and we're, like I said, we're in an absolute epidemic at the moment for male suicides. I can't reiterate that anymore. There's so many men out there that are struggling. And like I said to you at the start of this podcast, just miscommunication between me and my dad would have resulted in me ultimately not going out and having a good experience with him, having a good memory, something I can cherish and take with me, something that when that day inevitably will come, which is morbid as that sounds, it's the reality is we all have to go at one day. But what we need to make sure that we do is we make memories with these people constantly because what is the purpose? Yes, all right, everybody has mobile phones and we've got fucking 20 gig of fucking, you know, download space for your mo- for your photos that we never look at, but they're sat on a cloud somewhere. No one fucking knows where they are. No one knows what they're doing and do we look at them? I'll be damned if you sit there and look at them. However, you don't need a fucking mobile phone if you create the memory in your brain, because we've got a fucking amazing memory source. We've got a memory bank of ourselves. So when I dip in, I don't have to dip in and look for an artificial photo. I actually got to go out with him to enjoy the whole evening and everything that was encompassed with it, everything that brought to the table. I got to enjoy snooker. I got to enjoy drinks. I got to enjoy him stumbling down the hill, being held up by me and my brother, walking up the hill with him gigging like a six-year-old bloody child. 
it was amazing, you know, and he's almost 70. So I got that living memory that is going to be with me. That memory of him sat there, you know, while me and my brother were still drinking in the, in the uh, conservatory and him just drinking his pint, looking at me going, I'm going to bed, not saying a, n- a damn word and walked off to bed. I'll never forget that. And that's a live memory. You can't take that away from me. You can't lose it. It's in my brain. I've taken control of it. So I can dip in. Just like you would sit there and when you're feeling a bit sad, you automatically go to sad memories. If you're feeling happy, you go to happy memories. So we try to stay positive and we try to fill ourselves with these happy memories all the time in whatever form they come in so that we can dip into them. When we're feeling low and boost ourselves, that is how we get our serotonin lifted. If you're a constant naysayer, somebody who's not interested, somebody who just says no all the time like I was and don't actively look after your mental health. You're going to lose the battle and you're not going to create those memories. Because how many times have you sat there and somebody's let you down and you turn around and go, do you know what? He's let me down. Fuck him. And you've lost out on a memory. You've lost out on a potential memory. We all make mistakes. We're all human beings. We don't get it right first time. But you just have to put those negatives aside and just go, I I just want to create more memories. I want something in my memory bank. So when I'm sat there before I go senile or I'm sat there and I'm reminiscing about my family and I go, I just pull into a live memory and go, it's amazing. And I'll have a happy tear instead of sitting there going, oh, fucking through frustration, trying to find a a, a login and password to my iCloud account. But I'm 70, 80 year old myself and I haven't got a fucking Scooby Doo, but I don't need that. I've got, a, I've got a virtual fucking live tape recorder in my brain that I can dip into until it gets too late and that tape recorder gets blanked. But at the same time, there's no difference. Once, that, once you lose that tape recorder at whatever stage in your life, you're never going to... There's no other way you can have that back. You, you need to share memories. You need to share experiences with, with each other. It's so important. And as I digress on a massive tangent there, just trying to say to people that... You people, you people. Sorry, I was watching. I was watching. Um, uh, what's it called? I can't remember. Tropic Thunder earlier on. It was absolutely hilarious. I was just sat there watching something. Watched the Grand Prix, and I, I stuck on Tropic Thunder, just having a little bit of a laugh while it was scorching hot outside. But anyway, so I've had some goods. I've had some bads. Um, what are the bads, so James? Christ, tell me. Well, I've had a couple of bads. Like I said, you know, I felt bad letting down my my friend Kieran. Absolutely. I've been trying to engage with um, my friend Billy, who we just keep missing each other. And I was conscious today. Friday was trying to ring me again and I missed his call because I was out with my dad. And then I should have rung him Saturday, but I was hung over. And then today I've just been absolutely maxed out, not moving because of the heat. And I don't really. So it's just that lets me down because I feel like I'm letting them down. And that really does upset me. Um, and, you know, anyway. Uh, but at the same time, a caveat that with, I've tried to stay positive. Like I said, I was out Friday. I had a blinding time with my dad. We, my, Me and my brother stayed up till quarter to five in the morning just fucking ch- talking. And do you know what? I, I think I, I'm so happy that I think I'm hoping it's because I've lifted my obnoxious barrier and I'm becoming a little bit more of a positive person myself. And hopefully that's drawing him in or allowed him to come in or, want, or not allowed him to come in, but wanted him to come in. And I certainly feel you know, a real good connection back with my brother again, which is a fantastic thing. And it just goes to show the positives of making your life better. The positive on that is everything does fall into place. And I'm starting to enjoy things. I'm starting to get less of the bad days. But it's still a constant battle for me. And this is the bit that I was... This is the bit that the the downside to my weekend that consumed me a little bit was... Just to give you a bit of the you know the thought process that goes in the mind and 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 that was ultimately that how hard it was to juggle and i 've only got a couple of friends and I had another friend of mine actually um, a guy a guy from the R, from the my old r e f days um, and we just we, we were we were really good friends um but it just i think and when I left i just i 'd lost all enthusiasm with the air with the r e f and i i, I just i 'd had enough and we lost touch because he was asking me to do one final paint scheme i basically knew i didn't want to stay there so i just kiboshed it and put the barriers up absolutely because i took personal offense which i shouldn't have done 
to the fact that I'd done a few jobs before and there wasn't a lot of thank yous in it, to be fair. So to me, for me, I was already on the way out of my last job. So I, for me, I would, it was never bothered. I knew in the next three or four months I was going to leave. But however, that put a bit of a rift because I was everybody listened to what I said. They trusted what I said. So when I said it couldn't be done, they went, well, if James says it can't be done, because no one knew I was leaving, if James says it can't be done, it can't be done. So... It was just a fact that I just didn't want to do that job for them because I'd, I'd, I'd reached the end of my tether with the RAF. Anyway, so we, we clashed. Not clashed, but we just stopped talking. Uh, we were supposed to go into a little venture together. I was supposed to do a bit more painting for him and all that sort of stuff. And it, it never worked out like that, So, uh, which is, it, it is a shame because I enjoy the painting aspect. And one thing I'm trying to get back is the painting aspect. So anyway, he managed to talk to me this weekend. And he's actually sort of put the feelers out to say... Um, we, I've had a quite a robust conversation with him. I've been brutally honest with him, with him, with my mental health. He actually messaged me out of the blue and said, "You know, how have you been?" And I was like, oh, "I've been all right. You know, not too bad." Um, and then I told him honestly. So I said, "Yeah, my mental health's been a struggle. I've since you've last seen me, I've had three suicide attempts. You know, that sorry, two. Sorry, that was rude of me. Two. Um, and." I went into not detail, but just basically said I've been up and down like a roller coaster, but I'm getting better now. Last six months I've done this and I've got a podcast. So I went all in and he didn't reply for like a week. And he went, James, I really didn't know what to say, mate. I was like, well, I just wanted to be open honest, mate, because, I, you know, I don't want you to think that everything's fucking hunky dory. And I certainly don't want you to, you know, sort of walk in and not know the reality of what I've endured. Was that a wrong thing to do? I don't think so, because it's what I'm trying to nurture is talking more being open and honest and actually allowing people to go fucking hell mate you have had a bit of a shit time and i also think by being open and honest you you break down any barriers that you may have had you may you break down negativity because you go well if he's willing to divulge that sort of information to me clearly he still trusts me or clearly he still thinks a lot of me and i do i do think a lot of him as a friend you know we, we went through a lot a lot of um, ref designs etc etc but anyway so what I learned was over this last week, and that's where I felt a bit sad, was I haven't, I've missed, I've lost engagement with a couple of people and I haven't really sort of, I've tried on a, you know, I've tried to sort of kind of capture hold of it, but it's a bit of a juggle. It's a constant juggle, isn't it? So actively, that's why I said to you at the start, I tried to pull away from the podcast and just do quality over quantity. So I do, you know, it's really easy for me to manage a couple um, a week and actually enjoy the process then so that's a constant battle with mental health understanding what it works what doesn't work and but making sure ultimately and one of the things i need to do is make the effort with people actually keep keep consistent do it for that 66 days when you stop and drop it, it you lose everything and then you you go back to the start again and you and you, nobody wants that so absolutely make sure that you make the effort make sure that you continuously look after yourself otherwise you know we can go down this route and yeah we just we we lose the ability to focus and function but at the same time understanding that it is a continuous effort so i'm going to leave it there because it is quite late but it was nice for me to just jump on i've got my motivational minute coming tomorrow and, and my friend has actually uh sent me one uh, billy sent me one so i'm going to do one from his little uh his little ad addition if you like and i'm going to see if he wants to jump on a nice uh, live this week so we can get another live going uh, that'd be pretty cool because we do have a nice some nice banter with billy anyway and thanks everyone for listening hope you're all okay i hope you uh you know you've enjoyed your weekend and look forward to whenever you listen to this the, the rest of your day the rest of your evening or the rest of your week um and i look forward to talking to you again soon take care everyone bye